Okay, now we're going to try our 36 caliber Navy model. And same thing, we're going to go with 15 grains. Now it's looking to me that if you have the proper ram and it doesn't deform the nose, you're not going to get a lot of powder behind these conical bolts. But from what I found with the 44, they're more accurate. Okay, it's looking like the round balls will travel faster, but the accuracy is better for the lower velocity. So let's see what I got here. Now these do, everyone tells you, these do take a bit to ram in. There is a substantial ring of lead that comes off of these. Ah, oh, but that one went in a ways. This one might be different. The nose isn't that deformed. Alright, well, let me try this with 15. And it looks like I might be in luck. Be able to increase this a bit. All right, guys. All right, guys. This uh, Richmond Laboratory bullet. It went in a lot easier when they were lubed than when I did it dry. And with 15 grains, there's plenty of room in there. Okay. And this is just a bullet with a dipped lube and no wad or nothing. And I think I can add, I'm going to add more powder until I get to the maximum I can put in with powder. So, again, we're going to run it on the chrono. Very good. I didn't want to have my other chrono result. All right, let's see how we do. Only 500 some odd feet per second. And a little on the inconsistent side. Okay, what I'm going to do is go load this up with 16. I can go, I'll see how far I can go for the bullet to start to protrude. 25 grains did it with the 44. This one's got more room. And I was only kicking them out at about low sixes. like to get a little bit more zip out of it. All right, guys. 16 grains, still plenty of room. So it looks like I'm going to probably might run up to 20, 20 grains. And this one here I like. As you see, I got all six loaded. The pins are in there. It's on safe. And actually, now I'm getting better. I'm loading this faster. So let's run it through the cycle. About 690, almost 700 feet per second. So we'll load up the next in the series and let it fly.
Okay, we got 17 grains of 3F now. Gonna try this out. Make sure I'm still in the camera. All right. <clears throat> there's still room. I might be able to get 18. 19 will be pushing it. Don't know if I can get 20. 650. Getting a little consistent now and more accurate. Except when you pull. Oh, drop the cap. Right, let me go. I gotta get a cap. Off that, I had a cap fall off. Fire this last one. Yeah, that went wide. I'm gonna use the chronograph. Once we get a consistent velocity in that, we'll kind of go with that because I'm I'm twitching in that all over. Uh, a lot of them misses are my fault. Okay guys, no problem with 18. Uh, so we'll see if we can get 19 in next. That's getting a little bit better, right in the bullseye. Telling me 634, I think the chronograph is off. Probably the best group out of the bunch. So, we will see. Alright guys, so with the Richmond Lab Bullet, 18 grains was the max. So, I lost one, it jammed up the gun, I had to get it out of there. We're going to shoot 19 grains and 20 grains with round ball. Get it on the chronograph, and just so we can compare the difference. That's it, we only got five on that one. And as you remember, 20 grains has been my favorite. Now it's getting tough for me. I've been ramming it at my arms are tired, but we're going to get that last string out and get it done. All right, 20 grains round ball with a wide. Right. The other one was with a wide also. So we're going to give this a check and see how it works on the chronograph. This is kind of my favorite load with the round ball, 20 green. Let's see how it does. Yeah, I think my pistol shooting for the day is over. Or this thing is just fouled up. Could be that too. 
Well, there we go, guys. All right, I'll either add on to the rear end of this the chronograph results and the targets. I think I'll do that. So once I get home, compile the information, we'll wrap this video up. All right, we're pretty lucky to be able to get a good run with that Richmond Laboratory 36 caliber bullet in our 1851 Navy. Now to be noted, it did fire like 36 shots without gumming up or getting sticky. Of course, when it got home, you know, I, I had a hard time it got gummy. You know, after the gun cooled off and there was no lube on it. And also, in the video you see where I was having trouble towards the end, not really hitting well. I ran a brush through the bore and then when I run a patch on a tight jag, this is leading. This lead shot out one giant piece. These little fragments of lead here. That's what that is. It was a lead deposit in the barrel. Now I don't know if that came from the round balls because they weren't lubed. The uh, Richmond bullets were lubed, but the gun got leaded up pretty bad. So that may have affected the accuracy in the end. And uh, six cylinders, 36 rounds, it was pretty good. So let's review the targets uh, until we ran out of room for powder. Okay, first up was the recommended 15 grains. As you see, it was kind of all over the place. Um, and numbers-wise, we got an average velocity of 589, I believe. Extreme spread of 49. That ain't too hot. But, kind of, as far as numbers go, when you get up 16 grains, again, not too good of a group, okay, let's see, 3, 4, 5, yep, 6, not too good of a group, but this is the key, average velocity was 691, okay, an extreme, or standard deviation of 7 extreme spread of 20. So let's bear that one in mind. Now we went up to 17, and the group, you know, eh, not that cool. And what do we get for average velocity? Average velocity is 618. See, this is what's kind of weird about this with black powder. Now, 18 was the max. After 18, we really couldn't get much more into the cylinder without the tips of the bullet hitting. And that looked fairly good. Compared to the other groups, you know, that's the one with the best numbers, 16, 17. 18 kind of grouped in there good. But, our average velocity is 624, standard deviation of 24. For some reason, it's like the more powder I put in there, the slower the velocity. The highest velocity in the best numbers were with 16 grains. Let me get the paper over here. Okay, because we had an average velocity of almost 700 feet per second and it's kind of like the more you know this is 624 and the average here was 618 so something really strange but the best group at least I think was with the 18 grains so I don't know uh, I guess what I'll do is uh, load a bunch with 16 and just take them out one day and try them since that's the best velocity wise in that and see if it's just a matter of practice and getting used to the gun. 18 gets in there without you know that's that is the max I could get of course I did drill out my ram so the point still stays intact 
but it's kind of odd. The more powder you add, the more the velocity drops. Strange. So after that, I went on to the round balls for 19 and 20, and we'll look at that. So there's our 19 grain load in 20, which was abysmal, but I think what I did is I loaded these with the wad and no lube on top. So either to build up from the other ones or these here without the cases or the cylinders being lubed, I think I had a severe leading problem which threw the accuracy off. So that we may have to work on again, but 20 grains, average velocity 655, okay, standard deviation 50. This one was better, standard deviation 5, what is it, 70, 594. So that, that Richmond lab bullet with 16 grains, it's uh, 691, looks like the load to go with. I mean, that's just by going by the numbers. So I think it deserves some further research. And these may be askew. I know I shot better with 20 grains when I took the gun out the last time. That, that barrel was leaded up bad. You've seen that hunk of lead that come out. That could have thrown them off, too. Because it was 36 shots out of there and it still kept going. All right, so that's going to wrap up our Richmond Lab testing. Like I said, I'll probably go with 16 grains and just sit at the range and try to get 36 consistently out and see what I get. All right.